So, <clears throat> we're going to look at 8-2 today. Um, 8-2 is, is called the reciprocal fa uh, function family. Uh, it's The reason we did the inverse variation, this looks a lot like inverse variations. Um, the reciprocal function family is very, very important. Um, it, these kind of shapes are used a lot when they're figuring out satellite dishes, uh, head uh, headlight cones. A lot of these are also can be part just part of this. They have really good reflective properties. Um, so they, they actually are used and applied in the real world. So there you go. Uh, we're going to learn how to graph them, and we're going to learn how to do transformations of them. So the transformations, once again, come back. So pay attention. If you still don't have them figured out, we're going to do them again. Um, this is the reciprocal function. This is the parent function is uh, f of x equals 1 over x. And it does say where x is not allowed to be 0. Why is x not allowed to be 0? Because that would make it. You can't divide by 0, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> if you look at this function right here, there's a couple things going on. So um, please stop. Thank you. So um, the x equals 0, this, when it says x is not allowed to be 0, that's making this right here, this vertical asymptote, OK? We're not allowed to cross it. Does our graph touch it ever? No, no it gets really, really close to it, but it's not going to exactly, it's not going to ever touch it. Those are asymptotes. We have, so that's the vertical asymptote is when x equals 0. We have another asymptote. Any other x value I pick, it will touch one of those curves. Except for zero. Except for zero. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. And think about your, the now let's look at a horizontal. Is there something it gets, y wise, it gets really close to but never touches? Yeah. At y equals zero. So that's a horizontal asymptote. Um, so we're going to talk a lot more. We're going to start learning about asymptotes and holes in graphs, okay? Um, so this is the general, general, general form. Okay, and we're going to learn what the A does, what the H does, what the K does. And a lot of times if you move just the asymptotes for the H and the K, that helps a lot with plotting them a little bit quicker. Okay, so the asymptotes, whatever H and K are, move them around, and then we just kind of sit in the other little saddle parts of the graph. So we're going to we'd sit here and we sit here. <coughs> okay. They look like inverse variations if you just have an A value. Um, a is the thing that stretches or shrinks, and if you have a negative in the front, it reflects. Okay. Uh, one way to think of the A, you could also think of it as A times 1 over X. That's another way to think of it. They just will write, well, A times 1 is A. But the A value sitting in front versus on top, if you're more comfortable with that, that's fine. Okay. But that's the vertical stretch or vertical shrink. Um, and here's what the parent function looks like. Pretty cool. So, uh, two asymptotes, vertical and horizontal, and there you go. So let's look at this. What's the graph of this x not allowed to be 0? Identify x and y intercepts and the asymptotes of the graphs. Also state domain and range. So we have to do a lot for this. So let's start off by making a table. Now, I know I'm not allowed to have x. Uh, it does tell me that x is not allowed to be 0. So what's happening at x equals 0? What do we have there? Uh, no, we have a vertical asymptote. asymptote. Mm -hmm. you yep, because you're not allowed to equal it. So the vertical asymptote is at x equals 0. And instead of writing out the words vertical asymptote, because they're both kind of long, if you abbreviate it VA, I understand what that means. That's my abbreviation for vertical asymptote because I don't like to write it all the time. Okay? You can't make it any shorter. That's what, how you, if you want to abbreviate it, that's what it is. If you don't want to abbreviate it, you have to write the words out. There's my compromise. Um, so let's pick some values. Let's go, let's, let's be a little bit crazy here. And we knew, let's go, let's go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. 
Let's extend it just a little bit today, okay? We're going to actually probably have to add a little bit more. But let's just figure this out right now, okay? So let's put a negative 3 in. So 8 divided by negative 3. What do you get? Negative, negative 2. 2. 2. About 2 point, oh, around 2.7. So negative 3, negative 1, 2, 0.7. Right about there. And then let's put a negative 2 in. What do you get? Negative 4. Negative 4. Let's put a negative 1 in. Negative 8. Oh, I don't have enough right there. Oh, I can't do 0. That's an asymptote. So also, I'm kind of curious what's going on over here. So let's add, um, I'm curious at negative, uh, negative 4. What do you get? Negative two. Oh, there's the curve part. Do you guys see what the curve's coming? It's gonna look eventually like that. Now let's do this other side. So what if you put a one in? Eight divided by one. It's way up here. Put a two in, eight over two. Four. Let's make let's change that four to a three. It's gonna be a two. So at two, one, two, three, four. And then at four, it's at two. So there's that part of the curve. Are you okay with the curve part? The graph part of that? Now they ask for x-intercepts. Is this ever going to touch the x-axis? Yes. Wait. Can I put anything in for x? Can I divide by anything and make it equal zero? Um, wait. No. no. Wait. You can make it a really small number or you can make it a really big number, but you can't put a zero in and you can't divide a number by anything and make it equal zero. So is it ever going to cross the x-axis? No. So there are no x-intercepts. Is it ever going to cross the y-axis? No. So there are also no y-intercepts. No, these cross. No, these never cross neither. These, um, Until you start moving them. These types of functions will never until you start moving them. The transformations make it happen, but you gotta shift stuff. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Do we have a horizontal asymptote? Yes, yeah. At y equals right. zero. So the a value, does it change our asymptotes or our intercepts? No. Nope, it just stretches it. That's all it's gonna do. Okay, so let's do some more. What about domain and oh, forgot that. Thank you. That's important. Uh, the domain and range. So domain is X's. So what are we allowed for X's? Oh, no. I pick negative X's and that's okay. Uh, all reals. Except X not equals zero. What about Y values? What about our range? Except for y not allowed to be zero. Is that okay? okay. Um, this is something I learned today. I didn't ever know that these were called branches, but each of these little pieces. Like this right here, that's called a branch, and that's called a branch. I didn't know they had special names. So I learned something today. Um, so where do the branches of the parent function live? Now remember, the parent function is y, uh, y equals 1 over x. So where, which quadrants did the branches live in? 1 and 4. 1 and, just remember how to name it. This is quadrant 1. That's quadrant 2. This is quadrant 3. Quadrant 4. They go counterclockwise. So the branches in quadrant one and the branches, other branches in quadrant three. What if we reflect it? Yeah, you can reflect it. 
So if I reflect it, it's going to flip it, right? So this one would end up being up two. here, and this one would end up being down here. Can you reflect them the other way? Like one with two and three with one? Yes, but we're not going to. Uh, we do in trig, or in uh, precalculus. Quadrant two, this is quadrant four. So, are we okay with the quadrants? Quadrant business? Okay. So it says for each of the given value of A, how do the graphs of Y equals one over X and Y equals A over X compare? What effects does A on on the graph? So let's plot the parent function first, okay? What is X not allowed to be? Zero. So what do we have at X equals zero, that line, vertical line? Asymptote. Say it with me, asymptote. asymptote. No, don't put the T or the P, asymptote. No P, no P. Asymptote. Asymptote. You guys are ridiculous. Okay. Now, did I add or subtract anything? So where's my horizontal uh, asymptote at? Y equals zero. So I'm going to still have this one here. Draw those in. So those are my asymptotes. We have x equals zero, y equals zero. Okay. So let's plot our parent function. Um, when we plot these, we kind of also need to pick some uh, fractions. So what if I go negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half? Oh, is that okay? Negative 1 third? There we go. And then I'll do 1 third. Why did I skip 0? Okay. 1 third, yeah. So let's put those in. So let's put a negative 2 in. So we have 1 over negative 2. Oh, that's negative a half. What about negative 1? Negative 1. Negative 1, okay. So we got negative 2, negative a half, negative 1, negative 1. What about if I put a negative, what's 1 over a negative a half? Negative 2. You gotta take this and you gotta flip it, right? So it's 1 times negative 2 over 1. Negative 2. Negative 2. So at negative one half is negative two. So at negative one third, negative three. negative three. The reciprocal function means you make it the reciprocal. So this is where they start getting closer and closer, right? Mm -hmm. So here's your parent function on this. Here's the one branch of the parent function. And we're going to do the other side. So what if you did one over one third? What do you get? Three. And one over a half. Two. See, is a third. A half is at two. One is at one. What about two? Um, one half. Yeah. So that's your parent function. Is that all right? So now this one, it wants to know if. Well, what if a is 6? So can you think of this as 6 times the 1 over x? You can pull that 6 off the top. That's fine. Because it's all multiply divide. I already have the 1 over x. So how can I figure out what, where to graph these points? What am I going to do to all these values? Multiply. I'm going to multiply them by 6. So instead of being at negative 1 half, time, what's negative 1 half times 6? So at negative 2, we're at negative 3. And instead of at negative 1, we're going to be at negative, three. negative 6. And then that would be like, whoa, way down here, negative 12, right? So basically, it just stretches it out. And then you do the same thing over here. So instead of being at, ooh, 3 times 6 is 18, that's way up there. That's times 12, way up there. So 1 times 6 is 6. A half times 6 is 
That's what it looks like. The next one? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe let's. Well, let's do it. Why not? What the heck? We're already here. So, are you okay with for part A? You just take your y values and multiply them by six. Now for part B, we have y equals 0.25 over x. So could I think of that as 1.25 times one over x? Mm -hmm. So can we take all these values? And 0.25 is the same as a quarter, right? So can I multiply all these numbers by a fourth? Yeah. And then replot it? So what's that times a fourth? Negative an eighth? Eight. So negative two, it's, holy spamol, it's like way down there. It got like shrunk down. Which makes sense, because it's less than one, right? Um, multiply that by a quarter, so it's right there. <laughs> oh my lordy. What's that times a fourth? A half? Uh, one and a half? No, one and a four. Oh, it's not even at one yet. Look how little that is. I mean, it barely moves away from the, right? It's like teeny tiny little movement. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. What's the negative six gonna do? Uh, flip it. It's gonna flip it. So we already graphed the six with a of six. So negative six, you're just gonna take this, but you're gonna put them in quadrants. Two and four. Two and four. So instead of being here down at negative three, it's gonna be up at one. Positive three, and this will be up here at six. Does that make sense? We've, heard, we've talked so much about transformation. Oopsies. I don't think I have to get a grab too many. It is busy. I should have put another one on there, but I didn't. Big thing, if you got the parent function and you have an A, just multiply all your Y values by that number, which we know is a vertical stretch anyway. So here's the key concepts with reciprocal family. The parent function is Y equals one over X, where X is not allowed to be zero. That's the most basic reciprocal function you can have. If a is if a is greater than one, it's a stretch. stretch. If a is between zero and one, aka a fraction or a decimal, it is a shrink. If a is negative, reflection. reflection. And we deal with the negative as a reflection, and then we look at the number itself. Yes, mm -hmm. the negative is we separate the negative with the number. Some of you guys have not got that figured out yet. If it's negative three, you guys tell me it's a shrink. No. The negative is a reflection, the three is a stretch. All right? So we gotta separate the negative from the number. Um, here's what this would look like. We keep throwing on the x not allowed to be zero. Is that important? Yeah. It is. Yes, the fact that we've written it three times already today, yes. Um, and then of course we have the translations, horizontal by h and vertical by k. Now they give you some very valuable piece of information right there below that. They tell you the vertical asymptote is whatever H is. The horizontal asymptote is whatever K is. They give it to you. You don't have to think about it. They tell it to you. It's super awesome. So here's what this would this would look like. Y equals now remember we're we're just looking at translations right now. And remember, if it's done with the x, it's always the opposite of what you think, right? And then the plus k is back there. Now this one, they tell us x is not allowed to be equal to h. Because if x was equal to h, what would you have? 
Zero. zero. And that's why x equals h is the asymptote. Is uh, h on the bottom? Yes. And so all of our transformations combined. Is there. What about the question? What is that? It's the A. It goes with the A. <coughs> okay. Here we go. You ready for this? Do it. Okay. So let's talk about what we have. What's the four, the plus four on the bottom going to do? Uh, left four. Left four. What's the minus six do? Down, down six. Now the nice thing is we also know what our vertical asymptote is. It's whatever h is. So it's x equals a negative four. Negative four. Good. And the horizontal asymptote, y equals six. negative six. So you don't have to figure it out. They just it's given to you in the equation. So then, can we draw in our asymptotes? Yes. So at negative four, we should probably count by twos. Should we? No, let's just do it. No, it's not. You shouldn't use a pen. So there's our asymptotes, right? No, x equals negative four, vertical line. Oh, okay. Y equals negative six, horizontal line. Don't get them mixed up. Bad things happen. And we graphed our parent function earlier, yes? Yeah. So can we just use that information? Because all we're doing is shifting all those points. So we had a point at 1, 1. So we're going to, and so instead of being at 1, 1, we need to go to the left 4, down 6. So it puts it right there. We had 2, it was at a half. So why don't you just graph your asymptotes first? And then, then just graph it there? Graph yeah. It like it. Makes sense, right? So really, the points I looked at were the 1, the 2, and the 1 half. And the negatives work the exact same. It would be negative 1, negative 1 half, negative 2, right? And then I just moved them. I pretend like this was kind of like the origin, and then I just plotted them. It's pretty, they're pretty quick. They're not too bad. Are you okay with that one? Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. Gosh, I gotta keep stop doing that. Domain. All reals except x not allowed to equal negative four. It's whatever your asymptote is, right? Your range. All real numbers. All real numbers except what? Y not allowed to equal negative six. So the, the asymptotes tell you a lot, actually. There's a lot of valuable information with those. Is this OK? OK, I'll try to quit skipping steps here. Um, they actually wanted us to graph this other one. And I was like, now nah, let's figure out the, what the equation looks like. Um, so it says, what's the equation after the following transformations? So how where are we going to add the left 4? So it's going to be, do we do anything with the 2 on the top? No. So leave him there. What do I do on the bottom for the left 3? Plus three, and how do I tell it to go up four? Plus four. That's what it would be. So it's different from like the left and the right. 
It's the same as it's always been. It's always the opposite of what it looks like. Whatever it's done in the X, it's the opposite of what it looks like. It's going to be the same thing next year. Because we'll say it a lot. Are we okay with this? Yeah. All right. Um, the rowing club is renting a 57 passenger bus for the day. The cost of the bus is $750. Five passengers will be chaperones. Great. If the students who attend share the bus cost equally, what will model the uh, cost per student? So how are you going to figure out the cost per student? So how much does it cost? 750 And what are you going to do to figure out the cost per student? Divide it by? The number of students. The number of students. Don't even worry about it. You've gone, that's going to deal with domain and range. Like we can't have more than 52 kids on the bus. Oh, okay. Right? We're not even going to get there. So there's your cost. And we want to figure out how many students must ride the bus to make the cost no more than 20. So, so let's put 20 in for seat? Yep. Okay, we got to solve for n. What do we got to do? Multiply by n. I'm going to multiply by n because I need it out of the denominator. So I have 20n equals 750. Divide by 20. Now, we want to know no more than 20 bucks. So how many people must ride that bus to make it no more than 20? I want to see this, but your answer is this. Some of you guys have really bad rounditis. You guys round horribly. A lot. You're driving nutty. Okay. Um, you have time right now to work on your homework? Uh, there you go. What? I'm always here after school. Why not? Oh, please do. Wanna... Nothing will make me more happy than you like guys coming to take your 24% this class. Uh, and I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Yeah,